And as you can see, I've turned to the dark side, bought myself a 2012 Mercedes C63 Coupe. It's going to be a normal review, it's going to be more of a reveal slash why I bought it. So ultimately, it's, the reason why I bought it was because right timing and perfect spec. So why is it the perfect spec? Uh, first of all, it's in finished in this beautiful palladium silver. It's not you don't see it round very often, and I think it just it look on this car it, just, it finishes off lovely. So beautiful. You don't see many around in this colour either. You do get it on a normal C class, but in AMG it just looks it looks sublime. We also have a performance pack. I didn't buy it because of the performance pack, it just happened to have the option and it's a really good option in my opinion. So in the engine we do have like a dark grey manifold cover which kind of signals that it's a performance pack because it's normally like a light silver. We have stronger internals from the engine shared with the SLS such as the rods, pistons and crank. You also get an extra 30 horsepower for bragging rights. Than the normal 457 you get 487. Come down here, we have these. Uh, for me, they are like the wheels of an AMG. They just scream AMG to me. It's kind of like a silvery uh, on the outside, but in the inside, it's more of like a dark grey. It's really nice. Uh, we also have red brake calipers, which is part of the performance pack, and also composite brakes, which is also part of the performance pack. Got some Michelin Super Sport, Michelin Pilot Super Sports, that's the one. Would like to get some PS4S's on them, but still plenty of tread on these. So, yeah, perfect wheels, red brake calipers, what's not to love? Come around the side or the back, we also have a carbon lip spoiler, which is also part of the performance pack. And I think it just really, yeah, really finishes off the, the back end really nicely. Contrasts very well with the palladium silver paintwork. And then you have these four massive meaty uh, exhaust pipes. Look fantastic. Real. So big you put your fist in. It's quite hot so I'm not going to do that. But you have one, two, three and four. And a nice plastic diffuser at the back. I would like to upgrade that to a carbon one to match the spoiler. But yeah, that's the spec in the outside. The inside is really where the magic happens, so I'll show you shortly. I'll just quickly give you an overview of the car on the outside before we take on the road. Yeah, it looks mega. Absolutely stunning. Especially when it's clean. I cleaned it yesterday just for this video. I do prefer the actual saloon of the car. I think it does look marginally better, more proportioned, but you had the perfect spec, so you can, I couldn't say no to it. And the seats look much nicer in a coupe, which we'll have a look in a second. Let's see if I can get a shot on the really aggressive bonnet. Let's look at the lines. But yeah, let's go inside, because this is really, like the the winner for me so yeah there's a theme going on inside this interior and it begins with r three letter word if you can guess what it is yet it's um red i love red leather i love red interior and i love bold interiors because it's where you spend most of your time so you want it to look whoa wow so if you look down here we got nice red leather and the uh, door cards and you got these beautiful beautiful AMG seats two-tone seats so you got black and red contrast really well in my opinion got the AMG logo there and you've got the headrest here which is electrically uh, movable and then also part of the points pack just to finish it off you also get this lovely uh, Alcantara steering wheel or well, half Alcantara and um, these refurbishing really but yeah, finishes off very nicely. So let's get inside the car. It's a bit windy today. Apologies. See the window up.
electric steering wheel just adjusts itself when you put the ignition on. So let's have a look at the interior. So we have like lovely red leather on the door card, like I said, and we also get a black gloss trim as well. And that was kind of the really like the the main like selling point for me. Like oh music, whoops. Don't want to listen to that. Copyright strike. But yeah, black and red leather, it was it was just a winner for me, as well as the spec on the outside. This just kind of sealed the deal. It's just got it's, it's a really nice tone and it's not overpowering. I think the red red the red backrest and the way where you sit it just look a bit too much. But the black and the red really complements it well, as well as the black gloss and the, and the door cards on the other side. And then in the center console and around here, you normally get in like a silver, which I'm really not really keen on. It's just yeah, the perfect spec for me. And even the back seats, they look look amazing. And I've never sat in them, but they're probably just as comfortable as these because these are also Napa leather, so they're super comfortable, more comfortable than you think, even though it's an AMG. Yeah, uh, other than that, that's kind of the reason I bought the car, guys. It's well, there's obviously more reasons than that, but the spec this is the spec, and this is why it was perfect because of the, the color scheme, the coloring scheme inside the car. It, it was just it, you, you couldn't turn it down, really. So yeah, that's that's the car really. Uh, up here we have the panoramic sunroof, which comes standard across. I know it comes standard with coupes at least. And then you got heated seats, uh, cruise control, lots of goodies, electric seats, which is adjustable. You have got lumbar support and down the side, and you can mess with the electric um, settings here as well. And if I'm honest, I probably is just as nice as that 4 series I had a few years ago on my channel with the red leather everywhere even though it's a generation ahead of this car I really do feel like this is a much more special place to be even though it's an AMG obviously but like the dials they look really it's much more exciting the door handle looks nicer the door cards the quality isn't as plush and the materials aren't as nice as my four, as the 4 series but everything just looks quite up, more at market, I would say. Although the 4 Series has nicer, um, ergonomic, it's nicer and everything. But anyway, uh, enough of that. We're going to drive this car uh, briefly and talk about why I bought it. And that'll be enough for this video. I think before we start moving, I think it'd be rude not to give you some of a taster of what the car sounds like. So let's put the ignition on window down yeah <laughs> sounds brilliant doesn't it right so let's get driving before we get driving we need to we need to release the handbrake which is normally here but in the Mercedes, as I found out the hard way, it's actually here. And then the foot brake's actually down there. So this is quite an uh, awkward story because when I bought the car and drove off, I left the handbrake on and I think he, he could hear it, which is not something he wants to hear me driving off his pride and joy. I just, I just couldn't, it didn't phase me. I just couldn't find the handbrake, but eventually I found it down here. But yeah, let's go for a drive. And drive. And off we go. So, there are numerous reasons as to why I bought this car. I'll get through all of them with you. So, for the first reason is kind of the future, I guess. And the future, as you know it, is, is going electric. Electric cars are the way forward. And unfortunately, for petroheads like me who want to drive cars like this in the future, is the, are these cars going to be obtainable? Are we going to, to afford them? Are they, that's, that's the question really I have for myself. Um, and that's kind of a downer really because I really want to enjoy these cars whilst I still can, which is kind of why I bought a C63 now whilst they're still affordable, I guess. Another reason which ties in with this is I've never actually owned a sports car. I've never owned 
like a pride and joy I guess. I've had lots of like company cars, like diesels, and predominantly diesels. But there's nothing ever that has set my, my pants on fire, you know? I wanted to buy something that was my pride and joy and something that, you know, I just wanted a car where I could just find any reason or any excuse just to go to the shop. And that's what this car is. I, f I find myself making any excuse to go to the shop to buy myself some ch chocolate milkshake or bananas or whatever, just because I really want to drive the car. And that's something that I've been missing in all the other cars I've owned. And that's, yeah, that's another reason. I just haven't had like anything special or anything. That's my, my, my own car, I guess. And I think this fills a gap very well. Let's do a little pull. Let's give you some Yeah, it pulls like an absolute train and it sounds like thunder. Very, very angry thunder, it's brilliant. Uh, so before I get sidetracked, the third reason, well, the next reason why I wanted to buy this car was, well, let's, let's just go back a little bit. This wasn't the car I was actually looking for. I was looking at a different car. Well, I was looking at a lot of different cars and a massive short list of cars and it was one that filled well ticks a lot of boxes that was a z4m coupe and it had everything i really wanted as a proper driver's car manual rear wheel drive short wheel base weighs around i think it weighs around 1400 kilos something like that that's the beautiful straight six from the s54 engine that's also in the e46 m3 And it's a proper driving tool uh, and they're also quite rare they're appreciating in value and I just love the look of them it is a car that I really wanted but there was as always it had to be the perfect spec it had to be in this sort of color I don't know what the name of it is and it had to have red leather and it was very difficult to find there was one but I didn't have the money at the time to buy it so that quickly went away and there was also different colour called Sepang Bronze or Sepang Bronze. Only 10 were made in the UK and I really wanted one but well it was very difficult and funnily enough when I bought this uh, two came for sale and after I bought the, the C63 so unfortunately I couldn't get myself a Z4M Coupe and looking at the prices which quite shocked me was that this car is similar same value as one of those if you want like a low mileage from coupe though you're looking upwards of 25k whereas these range from like 19k to 25k depending on mileage or you can or the addition of the car as well you can yeah they can be very expensive but yeah, this this was matched to the Zephram coupe i was looking for but ultimately I do think I've made the right choice because this car offers a lot more than the Z4M Coupe offered. Obviously, I know the Z4M Coupe would have been a much more fun car to drive, more driver orientated, more driver focused, but there's, there's so much more that the Z4M Coupe doesn't do. This rides better, which is something that I kind of a must really. I don't want to be in a car where the ride was like jarring and I wanted to enjoy like road trips or like a B road blast. Like, don't get me wrong, this car is not like driving over an ironing board, but it's not like driving over a teenager's face ridden with acne. It's, it's firm, but it's not like it's not too uncomfortable. And these napper leather seats, they're very very comfortable it's it's not just that it's also the practicality I've got two extra seats at the back I mean I don't need them most of the time but when I went to Cornwall with my friends I get to put two people at the back have passenger in the side 
loads of um, room for luggage and that's what I love about it, it can, it's a multi-purpose purpose car it can be practical, you can daily it, you can do, you can do all sorts of it, it's brilliant What I also love is the soundtrack you have a very dirty sound when you're like pootling along at low RPM like this then the higher the RPM band you go the more like preposterous it gets I'll demonstrate now so if we just demonstrate now it just gets obscene the higher the RPM band goes and that's great I love it I love how it doesn't matter what speed or what RPM you're driving at it just sounds great at every given moment and I've, it's, it's so addictive it's, it's amazing Yeah, that that's it's this car. It just it ticks so many boxes. And don't get me wrong, it's it's still fun to drive around the corners. It's it's not it's not like pinpoint, but it's it's steering feel and it's it's very it's still nimble enough to get around the corners. And then when you start to lose traction, you get the the brilliant element of the rear wheel drive, and you you got to correct it and everything. I'm no driving expert, but. You can get this sideways and it's, it's not going to punish you, you can correct it as long as you're not too ridiculous for the throttle. But yeah, that's, that's my thoughts on why I bought this car basically. There's so, there's so many elements, I can't go through all of them in this video, I'll probably get it done in another video. But it's got the, the practicality, I've got, I've got the sunroof which is amazing, I've got cruise control I've got I also do have a seven speed automatic gearbox which is nice for just touring around and then I do, when I do want to like you know have a bit more engagement I just use the paddles I mean it's, I know it's not a manual gearbox it's not it's not gonna be any more engaging but it's still very really fun and the downshifts in these are absolutely ballistic But yeah, that's that's my thoughts really. As much as I really want a Z4 M Coupe and the driver engagement, this this car just it just trumps it for everything. Like the power delivery, it's got a lot more torque, and that's also another um, thing I haven't mentioned. It's that this car is so usable in every scenario because it's got so much torque. You don't have to like wring its neck just to get moving. You can just put your foot down and the power is just instant and you get lots of torque from low down it, it goes all the way up to the the red line it's so linear that's what i mean the power is very linear so you, you don't have to you're not in a predicament where you need to overtake someone because the power is always available when you need it and the throttle response is second to none it's super super um responsive so you don't have any problems with scenarios we need to overtake someone it's just completely instant yeah probably another reason to mention why I also bought this car was the spec was perfect uh, the timing was perfect that's something I had to probably mention like the color combination the outside the beautiful paintwork the wheels the performance package and you have the interior as well it, it all just kind of like binds together and it, it was it was ultimately the, just the best package i could get and it could, i just couldn't you can't really refuse it really can you if it's the perfect spec then it, it's, yeah it was a no-brainer for me really i know like the whites and black c63s do look really good but i think this just looks a bit more classy and it's a bit more subtle doesn't like scream out C63 which I don't mind but I just do think the specs just a bit more to my taste so that's another reason why I bought this car I think that's also an underrated thing about this car is that it's when, when you drive it normally when you're in like the controlled efficiency I think it's called this normal mode it's in it's just 
it's, it's, it's like a normal C-Class. There's not, the ride isn't that bad. And it's, it's quite quiet. It's not, it's not too in your face. It's, it's quite, it's quite brilliant, I think. But when you want it to be fast, you want it to be angry, you want it to be an AMG, it, you can, it's, it's, it's what you can just, all you have to do is put your foot down and get it sideways or put it in sport plus mode and it becomes a completely different car. It's so versatile. I can't really put words to describe it really. It's just such a versatile car. I know this isn't gonna be like a very detailed sort of like in-depth video you might, which is what you might expect. I'm gonna do a proper um, review on it, like I said, at a later date, which I'll probably cover a lot more things which I haven't covered in this video. This is just more of just a why, why I bought this car and some of the little details as to why I bought it. But just to summarize um, why I bought it, uh, electric cars, the future, are these gonna be affordable? Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. I'd rather not take the chance and wait. I'd rather just experience it whilst I can now or experience as much pe like petrol cars as I can, like fun cars. I just want to experience fun cars whilst I still can, whilst they're still obtainable. The other thing is sports cars, never owned one. This is my first one. Not, it's a good place to start, I guess. Well, best place to start, I think. Then obviously, this wasn't the car I was meant to get. I was meant to get a Z4M Coupe, but then obviously, they're so difficult to find. So ultimately, I got this, which, like I said, it just does everything, most things, much better than a normal, like a Z4M Coupe does. Practicality, comfort, more gadgets, faster. <laughs> And it's a very, it's, it's an absolute riot to drive as well. That's just another thing to mention. But I think that's going to wrap the video up for now. If you have enjoyed it, please do like, subscribe, and comment what you would have bought for 24K. Have I made the right choice? I think I have. I think it's, I don't think there's much more you can get for this sort of price point that offers what this does. So, let me know in the comments down below what, what you bought for 24K. If there's any video ideas you have, like what you want to see in this channel to do with this car, then please do let me know because it will help me a long way and get me up, like off the sofa and actually do something with this car. And like I said, and I've also owned this car for a year, so this is very late to the channel and I'm very sorry that it's taken so long to get content onto this channel. But I do promise, I'm going to be more up to date and be more consistent and I'm going to get some more videos out because I do have lots of ideas. I just need to really push myself and get this car onto the channel, which is what I'm really aspiring to do. So if you have, yeah, like I said, please do like, subscribe, comment, and any ideas are very welcome. And I'll see you in the next one.